Hi, my name is Phil. I like to talk about politics. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the Tracing App debacle again. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So, I mean, this day was always going to come. Uh, I talked about this back in April. Two months ago, the government had finally caught up to where I knew. And then there were people that obviously would have known things before I did because I found them out of the experts, of course. And I woke up to the news yesterday that we weren't going to be getting our tracing app until winter. And I was thinking to myself, well, until they decide to use the one that's been developed by Google and Apple, we're not going to be getting it ever. Um, you know, but, you know, reading it and they say, oh, it's not going to be ready till winter. And I'm thinking, well, OK, that's nice. So, you know, we'll be we'll be still battling, to use their words, the, the coronavirus just in time for it to join forces with the winter flu. I'm sure NHS workers are looking forward to that. But then I read, uh, and as I say, this had to come at some point, the government are dropping their Dominic Cummings inspired app in favour of the proper one developed by Google and Apple, which I saw someone refer to as the Gapple. I quite like, I like that. Um, but let's review. So why was it that I was thinking, as soon as I read the news that it's going to be delayed to winter, it's going to be delayed until they decide to use the proper one. And, and the thing is, the government's app was developed in-house, shunning two of the biggest tech companies in the world. I mean, strike one there. Then it wasn't working on a lot of phones that people have. I mean, someone could easily have a phone. A lot of people in the country do have a phone where it just didn't work on it. It wasn't compatible. I mean, that's strike two. And then... The particular app that Dominic Cummings wanted drains the battery like buggery. So there'll be a lot of people going, well, I don't want my battery drained. I'm not going to install it. But then even if you did install it, your phone would go dead. <laughs> and then it wouldn't work at all. Because the phone's dead. None of your apps are working, including that one. Strike three. It was, it was a non-starter. And this was all known months ago. Like I said, I was talking about it back in April as a complete non-starter. Because these things when, you know... Tech experts were saying the, these are just inherent features of the app. They weren't things to be improved, developed. You know, we weren't just talking about a scenario where, look, you've got this, we've got this app from Google and Apple. Um, and then the government going, ah, yeah, but it doesn't do things that we want it to do. We think we can develop one that will. No, tech experts were saying the whole concept of it was not going to work. And if I knew that, how did it take another two months for the government to finally work it out? So what finally did it? Well, and I'm sure there'll be a question on this in PMQs next week, unless loads of other stuff happens. Basically, when Keir Starmer was asking about the tracing app, and I now can't remember exactly when this was, um, maybe a few weeks ago now, and it must have been last month, because the Prime Minister previously had promised that the app would be up and running and all working and shiny for June the 1st. So Starman must have asked about it um, before then. He, I know he also asked about it afterwards. And the Prime Minister said that the trials on the Isle of Wight were going swimmingly. Uh, actually, I think another minister said that, but he said it would definitely be up and running on the 1st of June. Um, and another minister to briefing, I think it was, I can't remember who, said that the trials on the Isle of Wight were really well and they could actually launch it early. Now, they didn't launch it early, of course. And I knew it was a lie because I, I'd been keeping an eye on the Isle of Wight trials and they were going very badly. They kept having to stop them and restart them because there were all sorts of mess ups. And yes, yeah, so they just abandoning them and starting them again. They couldn't get it right. And eventually now someone in government has finally accepted the fact that if you can't get it to work on a tiny little island. It ain't going to work on a bloody big one. And a lot of people are talking about the money wasted. And sure, yes, eight million pounds, as far as I can tell, eight million pounds, which would buy a lot of food for those in serious poverty. And every penny of that money is wasted. We're not talking about it in the end didn't give very good value to the taxpayer. Something like that, you know, if, if you end up going for something that didn't turn out to be the best value after all, maybe there's a bit of hindsight with that. Maybe it was known at the time. That's, that's not what we're talking about here. All of that money was utterly wasted because the app is useless. It's useless. It cannot be used for anything. Um, 
and in a way that was entirely predictable from the start. The government are trying to argue the hindsight defence, but we knew about the Google Apple app, the Gapple, before they even began to try and make their own. At least I knew about it, and if I knew about it, I'm sure Dominic Cummings did, because, you know, he has his finger on the pulse of everything, don't you know? In the briefing yesterday, they tried to argue that they'd always backed both systems. Oh, yeah, we were absolutely going with both systems and then just seeing which one works best. Uh, this is patently untrue, as they are on record as saying otherwise. And it's not just the money wasted, or even yet another humiliation of my country by these clowns on the world stage. It's the time lost as well. Because every day, we were without a functional test, trace and isolate system. I say were as if it's in the past. Ah, still. Falling further and further behind... In, in terms of, of dealing with the pandemic. And the World Health Organization made it clear three months ago that we needed to test, trace and isolate. There could be no individual measures, no pick and choose, no cherry picking, as if it's a Brexit negotiation. No, no, we had to follow all of the guidance. You have to do all of it to get on top of this. And that we failed to do so for months. And now, even though it's a, now a finally official government policy, they've this is how far behind, non, never mind right measures at the right time. They've now come round to that position months later. It's now official policy, but the implementation is still being cocked up. So we're still not doing it right, even though we're now, the government are now trying in their own way. But, I mean, for example, putting Dido Harding in charge of NHS improvement. Has she got experience in public health? No. Has she got a scientific background? You bet your arse she hasn't. Has she got any form of medical background? Don't be silly. She helps run the jockey club and Matt Hancock gets donations from the horse racing industry. That is why she's in charge. Any bloody wonder that we cannot get anything right when we are giving contracts for medical testing to accountancy firms instead of letting hospitals do it. PPE contracts to a pest control firm instead of to companies who actually, you know, make PPE and senior public health roles to racehorse managers instead of public health experts. Oh, and of course, contracts for apps to drinking buddies when two of the biggest tech companies on the planet have one that actually, you know, works, keeps your data anonymous and doesn't drain your battery. I mean, what could go wrong? And all because of a combination of politically retarded Brexit thinking on British exceptionalism that needs to have been buried in the 19th century and on the insistence of Dominic Cummings that we use the system as a Trojan horse to steal our personal data. They kept talking about, oh, you know, it would provide lots of useful information to epidemiologists and stuff like that. No, 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 it would have provided a lot of useful data to him. That's what it was for. That's why they stuck with it when they knew it wasn't working. Well, now we'll have to nick our data in the ways he's been doing so for years instead and be happy with that. And yet, after the post-mortem inevitably takes place on this and other things, because there is going to be growing pressure for a public inquiry. They will try and beat it off for a while. The pressure is going to mount. I bet it's Matt Hancock that will take the blame for this. Never mind that it was Dominic Cummings that wanted this, and it's a mate of Dominic Cummings that organised this shambles. It was Matt Hancock's department that supplied the contract and the funding, and Boris Johnson is not as tightly attached to Matt Hancock as he is Dominic Cummings. We've already seen the extents to which Boris Johnson will go to keep Dominic Cummings beyond all reason. And this, of course, is his own fault. It's what you get for backing a Prime Minister that had no chance of achieving and staying in power for any great amount of time. Hancock would have actually, I know he's acted for the good of his career, not the good of his country, but he would have served his career far better by doing his job properly, getting sacked for it, causing trouble on the back benches, and then having enough credibility left when the party run Johnson over and scrape the remains of him up and then look around for some competent leaders to take over the government. I'm not saying he'd be one of the ones they'd look at, but he would have been able to get back into cabinet for maybe a longer period of time as a result of that. But no, complete lack of foresight and he'll have nobody to blame but himself when he's set up as fall guy number one when the political heat really turns up on this later this year. His own fault and hopefully his boss won't be far behind with the bums rush treatment as well. So there it is. Hope you found the video interesting. 
Um, it is going to be interesting seeing how Boris Johnson tries to spin this in next week's Prime Minister's Questions. Um, but anyway, there it is. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.